a mid-aged lady presented with bilateral cataracts. She had microcornea. Cataracts were cortical and posterior capsular and subcapsular area. A 2.8 millimeter keratome is used to make a sclerocorneal tunnel on the temporal side. The surgery is being done under topical anesthesia. The horizontal white to white is 9 millimeters and the vertical is about 8 to 8.5 millimeters. Tunnel floor entry with cystitome seals the tunnel as you are doing the rexis. The visco inside the anterior chamber is trapped and it cannot leak out because the entry is at the floor of the tunnel at the anterior sclera. A good rexis could be performed which is circular. The cornea is quite small so rexis appears larger but it is of adequate size. Hydrodissection is made after enlarging the tunnel with a blunt keratome. Hydrodissection, delineation and delamination are all done to pulverize the nucleus, epinucleus and the cortex. The lens nucleus epinucleus is rotated within the capsular bag and is prolapsed into the anterior chamber by manually. Then it is bisected using a mini vectus and a 25 gauge cannula which is continuously injecting visco into the eye into the anterior chamber to separate the moving nucleus from the endothelium. The cortex could be easily aspirated with a Simco cannula with active infusion and the aspiration. The posterior capsular opacity was attempted to be polished or excised or removed but it is very stubborn and it is attached to the posterior capsule. The subincisional cortex is aspirated with J-shaped Simco cannulas. This technique does not need a machine. All the steps of the surgery is done by manual methods. Preoperatively, it was assessed that the capsular bag is of the normal size in commensuration with the normal sized eyeball in spite of the cornea being smaller. Any residual cortex is aspirated and any amount of attempts to remove the PC opacity did not succeed. The, that's a PMM lens of standard size. It's too big. So that is abandoned and we're going to implant a flexible, foldable acrylic eyewell and uh, this is injected into the capsular bag. As you can see, the lens size is larger, but being a flexible, foldable lens, it can be easily implanted and maneuvered into the capsular bag. Visco fills the anterior chamber, and uh, with a synthetic hook, the lens can be positioned into the capsular bag. There is no stretch in the capsular bag, as you can see here. The capsular bag must have been of normal size. So it's confirmed that the lens is within the capsular bag, as you see now, and uh, entire HPMC is irrigation, irrigated and aspirated out of the anterior chamber and from the capsular bag. The patient had wonderful vision, and after a few days, the other eye also was taken up for a similar surgery. As the tunnel is not stretched or heated during the surgery, there is no need for a stromal hydration. The intraocular pressure is restored by balanced salt solution and the pressure is right now normal as you can see there and a small amount of um, antibiotic is injected into the anterior chamber and that's the end of surgery. Thank you.